All right. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon or good evening. This is Heather Mansfield of Nonprofit Tech for Good. Thank you so much for signing up for today's webinar with Dernity, Intro to Google Analytics. Today's webinar will be presented by Josh Kastorek. He's a really good trainer, so I think you're in for a treat. He is the Director of Marketing at Journey. He wrote a really good guide on how to use Google Analytics. The presentation will only be about 25 or 30 minutes, but we have plenty of time left over for Q&A. So there is a questions module in GoToWebinar. You'll see it there in the pop-up. Just send me any questions you might have during the presentation, and I'll answer them if I can. If not, I'll save them for Josh at the end. I did want to let you know that the webinar is being recorded. As soon as the webinar is over, it's going to download. I'll send it to Josh. He'll convert it, and they will send you a link to the recording within 24 hours of the end of today's webinar. All right, we're just going to keep it short and sweet. Josh, go ahead and take over. Thanks, Heather, and thanks, everybody, for showing up. I'm really excited to be here today. And I'm really excited about the topic. Google Analytics is uh, possibly one of my favorite things to talk about, uh, especially with nonprofits. And I love it for two reasons. One is because uh, every, every nonprofit has limited resources, right? And two, everybody I talk to in nonprofits cares really deeply about how they spend their resources and making sure that they use those resources wisely to impact their their constituents, their audience, and the people that they serve. And Google Analytics is uh, free, so it doesn't use up any of your resources, but also it gives you the data you need to make sure that you're spending your money in the right place and driving the right results so that you can actually have that impact. So that's why I'm really excited to talk to you today about Google Analytics. I like to keep things short and sweet, and I like to make sure that there's action items, like Heather said. So my goal is to uh, go over some advanced settings uh, that are really a must for nonprofit marketers. And don't panic at the word advanced settings. The reason it's, it's called advanced is because it doesn't ship out of the box. Uh, with Google Analytics, you have to do some configuring, but there, it's really easy, uh, simple step-by-step -step instructions. I'd like to also show you some of the key reports that'll tell you exactly how well your campaigns are performing. Uh, and this is really important because a lot of people get information overload the first time they look at Google Analytics because there are so many options. Uh, so I'm gonna boil it down to, this is just what you need to look at to get the low hanging fruit, kind of the 80-20 rule. And then lastly, I'm gonna go over some ways to really easily spot trends, even if you hate math. Uh, I talk to people every day about Google Analytics and one of the things I hear regularly is, oh, I'm not a data person. Uh, I don't like math, I don't like numbers. Uh, you don't actually have to be a data person to get value out of this. So we're gonna move right along. And because it is an intro to Google Analytics, I am gonna start with uh, answering the question, what is Google Analytics? For those of you that don't know, it's a free platform provided by Google uh, that you can install on your website and it'll track all kinds of things. It'll track um, where, your, where your users are coming from, which websites are sending you the most users. It'll track uh, what devices, whether they're on mobile or a tablet or desktop, where they are in the country, a whole bunch of other demographic uh, stuff. And like I said, oftentimes it, it comes off as a fire hose. When, they, when you have hundreds of reports, uh, you don't know where to get started. So we're gonna jump right in with, these are some advanced features that really you should be taking advantage of and a lot of uh, nonprofits that I work with uh, weren't. So uh, this is e-commerce tracking, conversion tracking, UTM parameters, custom segments, and ads account linking. This sounds like a lot. It sounds uh, you know, kind of technical. I'm gonna break it down for you real, real simple so that you can understand why it's important uh, and then also that it's really easy to install. And some of these, uh, if it gets complicated, a developer can install them really. Yes. I'm so sorry to interrupt you. We're having a couple of people that say they can't hear anything. So I wanna make sure, um, I can hear you just fine. Can we can we do a quick A-B test? Yeah, if absolutely. You can hear, 
Can everybody, audio is perfect. Okay, so it's just, it's just, we're good. Sorry to interrupt, most people can hear you. If you can't hear them, I got three messages on that. Try calling in directly. Um, so sorry. Okay, thanks, yep. Josh. No problem. <laughs> so we're gonna go through these and we're gonna really keep them simple so that you understand the value of them and why they're important. Um, but then also, if you're stuck on in, you know configuring it, most of them can be done by a developer really inexpensively because uh, Google Analytics is uh, so ubiquitous. So we're gonna start with the e-commerce tracking. And the real reason this is important is because uh, you have to know where your money is coming from in order to get more of it, right? And uh, we don't always like to talk about money and that type of thing, you know, asking for money and, and you know, money's not the most important thing to a lot of nonprofits because you want to, you know, get your services, get your programs. But at the end of the day, you can have the greatest services in the world. And if you don't have the funding for them, nobody's going to benefit from them. So when it comes to marketing, when it comes to fundraising, that side of nonprofits, you really have to know where your money is coming from. And the e-commerce uh, a lot of nonprofits look at it and say, well, we don't have a store, we're not selling any products. Uh, what this really means for nonprofits is it talks about revenue. So your donations, you can actually track your donations and your donation amounts. And the reason it's really important is because it gives you that full picture. So this, uh, this table is actually pulled directly out of a Google Analytics account. I anonymized it um, so we could use the data. You'll see that in this first column here on the left, the top row only has a 1.79% conversion rate. So it's not converting as well as the next two rows, not even close to as well as the next two rows. So if you didn't have the revenue data, you would say, um, maybe we should pull our money from, from that first row and start spending it in the ones that are converting at two or three times the rate. But when you actually go over and look at the third column, which is revenue, you'll see that while that second row is generating 30% of the conversions, it's only generating 4% of the revenue. Where the first column or the first row, even though it's converting at a really low rate, it's bringing on a lot of those mid-sized donors that are giving bigger gifts. And it's actually generating almost 50% of your revenue. If you're not tracking revenue and you're just tracking conversions, you're gonna be making bad decisions that, that actually hurt your performance rather than uh, enhance it. So it's a really, really critical factor. Um, I always say, if you're just choosing one thing, make sure you're tracking your revenue. The next one is conversion tracking. And that sounds, um, oh, uh, sorry, I forgot. With the e-commerce tracking, that does usually take a developer. So it's very easy for you to get installed because you can go to your web developer and say, uh, please configure this for me. And it usually takes uh, a couple hours tops. So it's very inexpensive, especially if you're you know, outsourcing your web development, you don't have anybody in-house. So the next one is conversion tracking. And this one sounds a lot like the e-commerce tracking, but this allows you to track not only your donations, but any other goals that you have. For example, email signups, you know, growing your email list is a big deal for bringing on new donors. Email is always a strong way to cultivate new donors. Um, but you can also track other things such as live chat or people that uh, actually call in. You can do call tracking. And this would be important for something, say, exact say for example, if you're um, a domestic violence center and you have a live chat and you wanna know what, what channels people are finding you on so that they can live chat and get help, get emergency service, um, this will allow you to track that from, hey, we have a Facebook ad that goes all the way through to uh, live chats or our Google ads grant is driving the most live chats. You're, if you're providing a service like that, you really want to know where people are finding you, you know, the people that need your service and need it, in this case, uh, crucially and rather quickly, how are they finding it? By enabling those goals that are not revenue associated, such as live chats or contact forms, you can actually 
keep track of that and make your, your impact much more visible um, and reach more people that need your services. You can also track it for things uh, such as volunteer signup forms uh, and other things that, that help you grow and help you run the day to day. So we really recommend uh, e-commerce and conversion tracking to give you a full picture of your impact. The next one is UTM tracking parameters. And the UTM actually stands for urgent tracking. <laughs> um, Google Analytics was urgent analytics before Google purchased it. And so that's where that UTM comes from, makes it a little confusing. But simply what this is, is um, it allows you to mark the source, which is kind of like your website. So if it comes from Facebook or it comes from LinkedIn or it comes from your email, uh, the source will let you know, will let Google Analytics know what campaign it came from. And then the medium is the type. So if it's an email or if it's a display ad uh, or if it's you know your ads grant, that'll allow you to compare those there are additional ones that you can put in there. So you could put in your campaign name and that would allow you to track uh, all of the channels that went to a specific campaign. Um, but at a minimum, I really recommend your source and your medium. And to do that, you just go to uh, this campaign builder that Google has, you put in your landing page and you put in your source and medium and it'll spit out a URL like this and you just, put that in your email or you put that in your ad and it'll track. One great thing about this is because Google Analytics is so common, many things, uh, many common tools integrate directly. So MailChimp, for example, has a Google Analytics integration and you can just go into your settings, check a box that says tag all my links, and then you don't have to worry about it again and all of your emails will be tracked uh, automatically uh, through the, through these using these UTM parameters. Uh, the other thing to note that's kind of the one gotcha is I always recommend using all lowercase because Google will differentiate if you had a capital letter M there in MailChimp, uh, that would show up as different from a lowercase M. So I always recommend making it a policy to do all lowercase because some people would type that in uppercase, some people would type it in lowercase, and some people would type it in uh, you know, with a capital M and a capital C, camel case. Uh, and then, then your data gets spread out uh, and you end up having to try to combine it all together. The next one is custom segments. And so this actually allows you to uh, split up your data so that you can see really where you're having performance issues or really where you're seeing the greatest success. And uh, it, it's, as you can see, there's, it's pre-configured for many things. It does allow custom uh, if you want to create your own, but in many cases, it's just a matter of, uh, you know, selecting the right buttons and hitting save. But what this can do is uh, it can actually allow you to see these segments and compare them to your data. So one, one example is uh, I had one nonprofit that had significant amounts of millennial traffic uh, and they, they, they said, you know, we have to convert everything over to mobile because millennials are glued to their phones and uh, you know, that's all they do. And we do, we do recommend you know, a mobile strategy because mobile is becoming more popular. But when we actually looked at uh, their segmentation, we found that their millennial demographic by using that segmentation was actually using their website most of the time at their workstation at work. And so they, they actually had about an 80% of their millennial traffic was coming from a desktop instead of a mobile. So that allowed them to really easily see, uh, you know, they could have spent a lot of money building a mobile specific website just for these millennials, only to find out that the millennials weren't actually using it from a mobile standpoint. This is, uh, you know, a little more advanced, little, uh, I would call it probably an intermediate type thing, but it also gives you the opportunity if you have a big project or something like that, or if you're looking for ideas uh, you know, for your next project, you know you need to make some big changes 
it'll allow you to create that segmentation and really know for sure if the decision you're making is going to serve your audience like you expect it to. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. And the last one here is ads account linking. And uh, mo many of you probably already have an ads grant account. Uh, if you don't, you should definitely consider looking at that. Um, there are some exclusions for educational and healthcare nonprofits, um, but just about everybody outside of those two industries is eligible for the ads grant uh, if, you're, if you are a nonprofit. And that gives you uh, $10,000 a month in budget from Google uh, to spend on ads. So if you're, if you're looking for a way to increase your marketing budget and you're not taking advantage of the ads grant account, uh, you should go ahead and do that. This also allows you to link multiple accounts. So, so many nonprofits have an ads grant account and then also have a paid account uh, because you're able to do different things there. What linking your account does is one, it allows you to see all of your data in your Google Analytics. So you don't have to continuously look through multiple places, but it also allows you to import your conversions from Google Analytics. Uh, conversion tracking is a requirement uh, for compliance of your ads grant. And uh, if you don't have your Google Analytics account, you'd have to create the link. You would have to create those conversions in your Google Analytics account and then also create those same conversions in your ads grant account. Uh, by linking them, you can just import them right over in real time. So that, that's a, a big time saver in terms of, of recommendations. So now we went through the configurations. That's kind of the, uh, the technical part. Hopefully I didn't, didn't lose you, didn't bore you. This is the exciting part. This is where you really find the low hanging fruit. And uh, this really comes down to, there are hundreds of reports. What are the most important reports? And I picked out three that uh, I spent a lot of time in. The source medium report is the one I spend the most time in. I'm personally in there every day, uh, but if you spent five minutes looking at it once a week, or even looked at it once a month, uh, you would find a lot of great information and you'd find that you'd be spending your resources more wisely uh, and get a lot of those answers to those questions that people are asking you in budget meetings and that type of thing. So we're going to start there with the source medium report. Uh, and we already talked a little bit about, uh, you know, the difference between a source and a medium. So a source, again, is if the traffic's coming from Facebook or Google or LinkedIn. Uh, the medium is the type, so maybe it's a social media ad, maybe it's a display ad, uh, maybe it's your organic search traffic. And what this does by um, looking at it through this report is you're able to actually look at everything from a source. So maybe you have, from Google, you have your ads grant account, you have your paid ads, uh, and you also have uh, your organic traffic. This allows you, this report allows you to filter it by the source and say, uh, you know, organic traffic is driving the most traffic, but it's not driving that many conversions. Or uh, your pay, your ads grant is driving great conversions, but your display ads through the paid account, maybe they're not driving as much. Maybe their goal is awareness. So that allows you to. Uh, compare all the types of campaigns you have from a single source. And then the medium is the type of the campaign. So that allows you to separate uh, paid versus non-paid traffic. So you could say, you know, how is how are my paid ads, my cost per click ads performing from Google versus Facebook versus uh, Bing ads or versus LinkedIn by, by combining by looking at it filtered on the medium, you're actually able to compare like types of ads and see which channel is performing the best. The additional dimension I had mentioned you could put in a campaign, that would actually allow you to see all of the data from a specific campaign. So let's say your, uh, your calendar year-end campaign that you just finished up in December, uh, maybe you did an email, maybe you did some Facebook promotions, as well as some Google Ads grant, and you had uh, banner at, banners on your website directing people to that landing page. 
you can tag all of those and you can say, for my year-end campaign, these are all of the sources of traffic and this is how they performed. So you can get a really quick view uh, that compares apples to apples uh, for campaigns, for uh, types of ads, as well as specific sources. That's why, especially when you combine it with the e-commerce tracking and the goal tracking, this report is something that you can look at and get a real quick view of how you're doing. The attribution model comparison, uh, this one, it sounds a little bit more technical. Uh, it's actually really easy to do, but essentially what this is, is Google Analytics uses a last interaction uh, attribution model by default. And what that means is uh, if I came to your site from Facebook and then later came back from organic search and then signed up for an email list and then later clicked on an email and donated, uh, that would attribute 100% of that donation to that email. And that's a good way to look at it, but you find that it's also a little bit limiting because if I came by Facebook first and then that sparked my interest, maybe that was an educational piece, uh, something along those lines. And then I went through several others coming back organic uh, and then finally email. If I just look at a last interaction, I will say, okay, I need to cut my budget from Facebook because it's not driving any revenue. Um, but when I do, I might find that it was driving a lot of interested people that eventually converted through email. So, and this is the reason I started looking at this is actually because years ago I worked in e-commerce and I, I found myself in a position where I had to cut some budget somewhere and I had two different channels and one was not driving any revenue, but was costing money. And the other one was driving revenue, uh, but was generating money. So I, I cut the one that wasn't driving any revenue and just almost instantly, my costs per getting a new customer doubled. And the reason it doubled is because that one channel that was not driving any revenue was actually driving a lot of really interested leads that ended up converting to revenue. And when I cut that off, I cut off my source of new leads. So I really recommend uh, looking at this, uh, you know, bottom line, you might find if you look at it, you know, once a month, once every six months, you don't have to be in this very often, you might find that there are some channels that aren't driving a lot of revenue, but are driving a lot of value. And if if you think about it, if you're able to get the same results that I got from the e-commerce test in reverse, so that you're able to cut the cost of getting a new donor in half, uh, hopefully you can see that there's significant value <laughs> to being able to do that. So this this one uh, is a little, little more on the nerdy side from a data standpoint. Um, but you can get a lot of value out of it and you don't have to look at it very often. You can look at it once every six months, once a quarter, uh, once a year if you want to and still derive value from it. And the last one here is the funnel visualization report. And this does take a little bit of, con of configuring, but essentially when you go and set up those goals, what you can do is you put in the URL uh, of the page as well as uh, give it a name. So this is really important if you have multi-step donation um, processes, or if you have multi-step volunteer sign-up processes, something like that. A lot of nonprofits I'm finding will use something like WooCommerce on WordPress, or they'll use FoxyCard or something like that that is very free or inexpensive. Uh, but it's designed for e-commerce. And so what you end up doing is actually having uh, somebody who wants to donate has to create their donation and add it to a shopping cart and then go through a, a product, you know, a, a purchase process that was designed for products. Uh, and what you'll find is a lot of people drop out in those processes. What this allows you to do is mark each step of that process and figure out where people are dropping out. And uh, when it comes to e-commerce, there's a lot of data about 
funnels and uh, conversion rate optimization in e-commerce, less so in the nonprofit world. But my experience says, if you spend time on conversion rate optimization, you're going to be getting a lot more donors, a lot more volunteers, offering a lot more services for the traffic that you have to your website. And so the one piece of data that I do have is uh, about 17% of people that go to your donation page will actually complete your form. That's a, an industry average. Uh, so if you're doing better than that, way to go. If you're doing less than that, then there's probably some room to improve your conversion. And what you'll find is if you fill out this funnel visualization, it'll give you a nice view and it'll say, uh, you know, 100 people went to your donation form, 80 people went to uh, adding the donation to the cart, if you will, and then only 10 people went to filling in their physical address, uh, and then five people actually filled it out. Since there's a huge drop between uh, adding the donation to the cart and filling out their physical address, maybe you say, do we necessarily need the physical address for the first donation? And we can get it once they're already in our CRM, once they've already donated with the follow-up, and you have a large opportunity to increase your conversion rates there. So it's, it does take a little configuring, but again, it's one that you don't have to look at very often. You can set it up and then come back a couple months later once you've collected data and find big opportunities for improvement. So hopefully uh, now you have the, the um, configurations, you got your data set, you've got your source medium report that you're looking at as well as the others. Here's the meat of it is how do you spot trends if you're not a data person, if you're not a numbers person, if you hate math, you know, what, whatever you describe yourself as. Uh, and the first way is to look for big changes. I think this is a really cool graphic because there's actually no numbers here. I cut off all of the numbers in the screen capture intentionally, but you can see uh, in October 2018, this giant orange spike here where something different happened. If you see a trend like that, that's just a perfect red flag to say, all right, let's look at this and see what went on here, why that data is different than the normal. And it especially comes in handy if say 2019, October 2019 was the blue line here. And then you're wondering why you didn't have as much revenue. You can quickly look at the year before and see this giant spike and say, hey, there were some probably some major campaigns that we were running last year that we didn't this year. Um, and that will give you the information you need to show the differences. So simple tip, look for big changes. The next one is to look for inconsistency. And again, you have, you have a dark blue line and that's the users to your website and the light blue line, which is actually your uh, goal conversions, your goal completions. And you see at the start, as users go up, so does the goal completions. But in April, users stayed about the same, dropped off a little, and the goal conversions dropped to nothing. That's an inconsistency. Uh, when you see something like that, it should be a red flag that says, uh, we need to do some further investigation here. Typically, when you see something like this, what it means is somebody uh, changed something on your website that broke the conversion tracking, which isn't a big problem, especially if you spotted it quickly. But another thing it could mean is um, that somebody actually broke the form on your website. If any of you follow uh, the NIO, which is the Nonprofit Innovation and, and Optimization Summit, they actually released a email cultivation report this year. <coughs> Excuse me. And they they tested out uh, emails to see how many emails nonprofits were sending out after you signed up for their email list and after you donated. And they found that I believe less than half of the nonprofits they were able to actually get emails from when they donated. And some of that is because nonprofits uh, don't send out that many emails. But a big part of that is because 
people don't look at the analytics and when something breaks, they don't notice it right away. If you set up your form and you've tested it and you assume it's working uh, and you haven't looked, you haven't tested it in six months or a year, but you've made changes to your website, I recommend going and testing it. Uh, one of the things that I do is audits for nonprofits and I found many that uh, the email forms were working when they set them up, but for whatever reason at the time of my audit, uh, they were not working. And so they actually had people that thought they were submitting their email address and not ever uh, being able to submit it because something broke on the form. When you see an inconsistency like this, that's a great trigger to say, we need to go check things and make sure they're all working. One of the nice things about Google Analytics is they actually allow you to set up alerts. So for this, you can actually set up an alert and say, when my conversions drop uh, 20%, more than 20% week over week, send me an email notification. So you can actually set up an alert for this and you don't have to go to Google Analytics regularly you'll be notified, notified proactively. I do still recommend looking because sometimes uh, emails go to spam folders or something like that. Uh, so I do recommend checking in periodically, but you can use that alert to automate the process quite a bit. And then last, I, I really just wanna talk a little bit about setting KPIs. And really this is your key performance indicators. So they can be different um, with different campaigns. For example, you may have an awareness campaign going on where you're just trying to get new users. You may have a retention campaign, which I, I hope you do. Um, the, I believe it was the MNR benchmark study showed that the average retention rate of donors, uh, new donors, is significantly lower than 50%. So retaining those donors is uh, you know, a key to strong sustained growth. But you may look at um, other things such as engagement and new users and that type of thing. But make sure that uh, it's easily available data. If you have to go looking for it, uh, you're probably not going to because you're busy, right? And it needs to be meaningful. And lastly, it needs to have context. And what this means is uh, if I told you you got 25 new donors yesterday through your website, uh, some of you might be really excited uh, because that's a lot for you. Some of you might uh, not even notice because you're a really large nonprofit, but most of you are probably saying, well, is that good or bad? And it's not until you have the context to say your average for the month is uh, 10 donors a day and you got 25 yesterday. Well, then you know because of the context that it's really good. So make sure that you have that context, make sure that it's easily available. And one thing that Google offers, uh, again, that is amazing time saver, is you can create a custom report and a custom dashboard, which means every time you log into Google Analytics, your custom reports are there and you're able to see the data that you want to see. And you can also schedule your reports to be emailed to you weekly, monthly, however often you'd like. So you don't even need to log in to make sure you're getting your key data. It just takes a little, little bit to set up. Um, most people can probably set it up in less than 20 minutes for their, their key data points. At this point, hopefully you're really excited about Google Analytics. You wanna dive in and you're comfortable seeing how easy it is to, to get that low hanging fruit, kind of that 80-20 rule. But if you're still saying, man, I don't have time, Josh, to do all of this. Can you just boil it down to one? Really, really the critical points are make sure you have that e-commerce tracking because you've got to know where your revenue is coming in and where it's going out. And then look at that source medium report. Get familiar with that. That's where the, the meat of your data is and that's where you're going to see how you, all of your campaigns are performing. So hopefully that, that got you excited. Um, if you want a copy of the slides or anything like that, we will be sending out the recording. So you will have all the information. Feel free to email me. Um, and now we have time uh, to open it up for some questions. All right, thank you, Josh. We have a lot of questions. 
And I really was listening. I have to say a lot of that felt super advanced for me. And I just keep thinking, this is why I keep seeing on LinkedIn that all the new hires in fundraising must know data analytics and advertising, because clearly I'm missing out on something here in terms of knowing Google Analytics. When you say, I'm curious in your experience, your number one recommendation is to run that e-commerce report. When you talk to nonprofits, how many would you say what percent are doing that when you first talk to them and what percent are not? Uh, I, in my experience, it's based on size. Mm -hmm. um, just, just about all of the large nonprofits that I've worked with are already doing some sort of e-commerce tracking, whether mm -hmm. it's through Google Analytics or their own systems. Uh, when it comes to mid-size, um, so I would say, you know, if they have three million in revenue or less, uh, I would say maybe one in twenty mm -hmm. has e-commerce set up when I start looking at it. So it's fairly rare. Okay. And really, the, the most common thing I get is we don't sell any products. Why do we need an e-commerce? And right. it's um, it's unfortunate that Google called it e-commerce, um, but they did so because it was designed for, uh, you know, retail sites. <laughs> and the, the guide that you're going to send after the, with the link to the webinar recording, does that explain it a little in a little bit more detail in terms of how to create an e-commerce report? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we, we do have this guide um, and I really appreciate your feedback on how technical it is. Um, because we are actually going to be sending out a survey as well, because I want to make sure my goal at the end of the day is uh, to make sure one that you know how to how to take action uh, mm -hmm. and two that you do, because the reason I'm, you know, I'm doing this is because I want to help uh, help nonprofits succeed. Uh, so if you're if it's if it is too technical and you're not able to implement anything, I really want to know that. So we are going to send out a survey afterwards that asks about how technical it was, how high level it was, you know, how mm -hmm. you felt the content was. And I'd really, really appreciate you guys taking the time to, to send that back uh, because I do, you know, we keep it to, you know, five or 10 questions, but I do read all of those and I do adjust my content uh, to try to make it more useful. Okay, great. Uh, it might just be me, but uh, some other folks might have thought it was too hard as well, and other might have thought it was just great. I do know that I had some very basic questions that a lot of people asked. Um, quite simply, where do you find, let me see, I wrote them all down. They were all asking, where do you find the UTM generator, the custom segments report? in the attribution model report in terms of just navigation where is that inside of google analytics and i was looking the other day myself for a utm tracker service so i want to know to the answer to that as well because i could not find it in google so where are those uh, yeah reports? if you do a google search for uh, google campaign builder <laughs> mm -hmm. um it'll come right up as the top result it okay. is I, I really wish google would build it right inside analytics but it is actually a separate site oh okay. it, it's a complicated url it's like ga.dev.google you know something like that yeah. so it's not even something that's easy to pass along to people uh, unless you have a specific link <laughs> well i think that's actually a very useful tip because finding a simple utm generator is not easy you have to buy a hubspot or something like that yeah, um, yeah. if you just search uh, google campaign builder It'll come right up, be the first one. Okay. So you got that, everybody? Just Google it. Google, Google <laughs> Campaign Builder. Um, let me go through the questions. One question I also had, you know, when you were saying run these reports, and it was really important to know how much it was costing to get a new donor. Do you know the average cost right now of getting a new donor, say through advertising? I do not have that mm -hmm. right in front of me. Mm -hmm. um, I believe I, re I referenced the um, the MNR benchmark study mm -hmm. uh, fairly regularly. I don't know if you're familiar with that. I am. Um, but I I think that data is in there. And I'd okay. love to pull it up. All right. I was just curious. I know Wild um, Wild Aid did a 
Facebook tracking through Google Analytics and the Facebook Pixel once, and they released the results, and they they had to spend thirty six dollars for every new donor they got, which mm -hmm. of course seemed like a lot for small nonprofits and medium sized nonprofits especially, but it paid off in the end. One person, I'm just going to start going through the questions. We have tons of them. Um, by any chance, do you know if Constant Contact has a UTM generator? Um. Constant contact. I think. I think if you use their templates, they might have auto tagging. Yeah. But if you if you create a uh, if you create a custom template, mm -hmm. uh, a lot a lot of nonprofits, uh, which which kind of surprises me, actually upload custom HTML mm -hmm. uh, to both Mailchimp and Constant Contact. Uh, which I think is a lot more cumbersome, in my opinion, than just using one of the templates and modifying it. Mm -hmm. uh, I have not used Constant Contact in a few years, so I, I can't guarantee that. But last time I used it, I believe they had auto tagging if you used one of their templates. If you uh, uploaded HTML, then you had to, to tag the links yourself. But it seems like the Google Campaign Builder, which allows you to track whether this is coming from Twitter or email, is yes. a lot easier tool. All right, yeah. so again, a lot of people were just asking, you know, where do I find the place to create this report? So mm -hmm. let's let's just say that again. I think they were called the attribution report and another one I already ripped it up. The custom segments, is that just under the admin panel in Google Analytics? Yeah, so um, the custom segments is actually at the top of the reports. Okay. Uh, you'll you'll see that it says all users by default, and then right next to it there will be a place to add a custom segment or add a segment. Okay. Uh, and if you click on that, it'll open open up an admin that allows you to pick your segments. It has a right. lot of predefined segments, or you can create custom segments. Um, and then the attribution modeling, uh, it is either it's either in the e-commerce uh, section or it is in the uh, goal, complete goal conversion section uh, on the left-hand side. I do actually have uh, in the guide, I do actually put a link to the Google campaign URL builder and all of those reports, uh, the direct links to show you where to find them. Okay, wonderful. A lot of people also asked about Google Ad Grants and just again to reiterate, how much is the grant? And a question that came up a lot is how hard is it to get the grant? And number two, if you have the grant, can you merge your paid Google Ads account with your Google Ads grant? Yep, absolutely. So um, I can answer those questions. The answer was not yes to merging them. You don't you actually don't want to merge them. <laughs> oh, um, okay. So uh, it is ten thousand dollars a month in uh, in budget for advertising on Google. It is uh, search ads only. So if you run video ads or display ads or anything like that, you'll also want a paid account because you can't do that through the ads grant. And why keep them separate? Um, the the reason to keep them separate is because the way Google has it set up. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot add a payment method to your ads grant account and that's kind of how they how they know not to charge you okay uh, and so if you have an ads account that has a payment method it cannot be used for the ads grant i that's, see that's, that's why you would keep them separate okay uh, it's just it, the is that, yeah okay yeah. Um, one person aaron was asking do you have to use the facebook pixel for Google Analytics, or is there another way to link to your Facebook advertising? Like, how can you, again, my head kind of froze a little bit in terms of the conversion tracking and coming from Facebook. Is there another way to do it, tracking conversions on Facebook without using the Facebook pixel, is I believe what Aaron's asking. Yeah, so I recommend using both. Mm -hmm. um, the reason I do that is because your Facebook pixel will allow you to get uh, additional information like view through conversions. Uh, and view through conversions basically means somebody saw your ad, but they didn't click on it to convert. Okay. Uh, and that is, uh, that's, that's getting into a whole different attribution discussion. Yeah. 
but it you is do like 12 webinars on this this whole thing <laughs> yeah and i would love to i i could talk that all day so um but so you want you want to use the facebook pixel uh because you get you will get that view through data which you can't get through google analytics but also the facebook pixel allows you to create custom audiences to advertise against in facebook which google analytics won't what you'll want to do is you'll you'll want to add those utm tracking parameters to your facebook ads mm -hmm. and then all of that can the con direct conversion data and the clicks and the traffic to your site all of that will populate into google analytics and you'll be able to compare that to your other channels so i'm just thinking i mean this alone to me sounds like a full-time job so at the large ones, in your experience, I mean, is is it the fundraising director that's doing this? Have they hired a data person? It, it, are there consultants that are just focusing on creating the conversion tracking and uploading Google Analytics and Facebook pixels? Like, how are the large nonprofits managing all of this? And I know you said just at the very least do the e-commerce, so that would probably be a good start. But it sounds like so much work. So how do the large nonprofits do it? Yeah, usually it's uh, it's actually several people. So usually there's a when I have a meeting uh, with a larger uh, nonprofit, usually it's with a marketing uh, and or communications person mm -hmm. that's in charge of the website, and then there's usually a fundraising person on the call that's uh, in charge of the you know the money mm -hmm. <laughs> specifically. Uh, and then often there'd be also an IT person that's in charge of making sure all the technical stuff gets implemented. Um, and then they, they would also be working with me as a consultant uh, to help analyze and, uh, you know, make, develop a strategy and recommendations. Uh, okay. So, yeah, with, when you get really large, it can be multiple people. And it can even be, I've worked with a few that have uh, teams of people in each of those departments so mm -hmm. so i'm just thinking for the small nonprofit they're doing well if they've got the account they've got the code on their website they're setting up they can see the basic analytics and then they're they're moving over into e-commerce and some basic conversion tracking i think that's probably some good benchmarks for a small nonprofit would you agree yeah absolutely if you're if you're able to look at the conversion tracking in that source medium report Mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't take a lot, you know, if you look at it for maybe five minutes once a week, mm -hmm. you'll be able to see really quickly, oh, I'm spending a lot of money here and it's not actually doing anything. Right. Um, and so you'll be able, you'll be able to make those decisions a whole lot faster. Okay. Um, one, of, one of the reasons I'm so passionate about Google Analytics is because I talk to a lot of smaller and midsize nonprofits and they say, I only have a limited budget. And I'm a one person, you know, department that's managing IT website content yeah. you know, and fundraising somehow online. I don't have time to do this and I don't know where to put my resources that, that I'm going to get the biggest results because, and it's really important because I have only a few resources, right? Yeah. And so if you look at Google Analytics, you can say, you know, I'm putting $50 into Facebook, I'm putting $50 into LinkedIn, I'm putting $50 into uh, display ads, I'm sending out uh, campaign emails, and I'm running Google Ads grant, and I can see exactly how much, don't, how many donations, or how many new volunteers, or how many email subscribers are coming from that in one glance. So I think one thing that would be very useful for the beginners, because we did get this question as well, which is, what is a conversion? So a person was that, and what I'm thinking of is, so let's say you go to a website, you make a donation, and then it lands on a page that says, thank you for making your donation. And that website URL will be distinct. It will say thank you in it, or I'll have a unique you know, URL, unique website string of characters and whatever. So my understanding on a very basic level is how you know how many people made a donation via Twitter or Facebook or your website or a display ad is you go into Google Analytics and conversions and you can track that by how many people actually land on that thank you page. Is that correct? Yep, absolutely. And uh, yeah, from a conversion standpoint, I like to just say, you know, it, it's somebody took an important action for you. 
Mm -hmm. So uh, in most cases, if you're small and mid-sized and you're only wanting to track one thing, you should track donations. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, if you have the ability to also, you know, look at your email subscribers. I consistently see email as the best way to cultivate new donors. Mm -hmm. And so I really recommend growing your email list. If somebody signs up for your email list, that's a conversion. Somebody makes a donation, that's a conversion. I you see. can get, uh, you know, you can get really spread out with lots of conversions. You know, the example I gave uh, with a domestic violence center, if somebody opens up your live chat and says, I need help, you know, right now, that's a conversion because that's an action you wanted them to take. So it really can be a wide number of things. If you're small and you're, you know, just looking at one thing, look at donations. If you're able to look at two things, look at donations and email subscribers. Yeah. And everyone who's listening, what Josh was being kind enough and unsalesmanlike enough to not tell you is Journey, the company he works for. And they take this to a whole different level. The, the back end, it creates pops up, it creates inline content conversions directly in your website where say, for example, you land on your website, you're an environmental organization, somebody clicks on climate change, then they can actually see how you go through the website, present specialized content and pop ups. That's what Journey does. So it takes the whole conversion things. I, I have a hard time even wrapping my head around it. But after you figured out Google Analytics, I would definitely take a look at Journey because they do a lot of this and clearly Josh knows his stuff and he can help you get set up with that. Which made me, another person was asking about the role of cookies in all of this. Can you explain cookies um, and you know, kind of in the age of website privacy and all that sort of stuff, when you land on a website and it says, hey, we use cookies you know, to track your, your, where you're going on our website and what you're doing. Is that just what's underneath all of this, or how, how is the actual structural component of tracking conversions working? Yeah, absolutely. So um, Google Analytics probably uses multiple sources. <laughs> um, it, it is based off of cookies, uh, but they, they have access given that they have you know their own operating system, their own Chrome web browser, uh, Android phones run on a Google run operating system, as well as just about everybody in the world has a Google account. Uh, they're, they're able to track at a much higher level than just about everybody else. Mm -hmm. The reason you see those, uh, the cookie notices mm -hmm. is largely due to uh, GDPR, uh, which came out a year or two ago in the European Union. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, like a data privacy, it just says, you know, you have to let people know that they're being tracked and give them the option to opt out, uh, as well as I, I believe it has requirements to actually see the data that's been tracked. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and California has adopted an additional or a new uh, similar rules uh, called the California Consumer Privacy Act. So you'll be seeing that a whole lot more. If you yeah. want to get a good picture of uh, you know, how you're being tracked. I like the Ghostery plugin, it's called. Okay. Uh, and it's free, you can install it. And anytime you go to a website, you can just, you can click on it and it'll show you all of the, you know, Facebook pixel, LinkedIn pixel, uh, double click, Google Analytics, all, everything that's being tracked <laughs> on that site. Yeah. Okay. So, and it's a whole nother webinar, but it's a fascinating subject, what just passed in California. Um, how many years do you think until the United States has the same sort of GDPR regulations? I mean, wouldn't it be better that nonprofits just prepare for it now instead of catch up later? Absolutely. Um, that's something uh, we at Journey kind of predicted as soon as the European Union started talking about GDPR is that it come to America. Um, so Journey is, fully GDPR compliant um, and everything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, that. That's something we're watching closely and we, we definitely anticipate uh, will be coming sooner rather than later. So one person who brought up the question of cookies saying that they're trying to avoid using cookies on their website. My guess is maybe that's a consideration of privacy, but when you think about the future of online marketing, I mean, how can you avoid using cookies? What's your 
What's your take on that? What's the cost benefit of using cookies versus not using cookies? Yeah, so I mean, realistically, if you're not tracking anything, you're not going to know how to make the results better. Um, so, and and you pretty much need cookies one way or another, at least at this point, to track. So, Google Analytics okay. is cookie based, Facebook cookie based, LinkedIn's cookie based, uh, and they they all you use additional basic. stuff. You have to have cookies. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're going to want to know, right, if you want to use Google Analytics, you're going to be placing cookies on your website to track people. Okay. If, you, if you don't want to, that's the same with all, um, you know, some people like uh, uh, PIWIK, P-I-W-I-K, which is mm -hmm. like an open source alternative mm -hmm. uh, because they like it to be self-hosted and, you know, privacy concerns about sending all your data to Google. Mm -hmm. uh, but even that is cookie based as well. So, wow. Okay. That's another webinar. <laughs> Here is a question that I don't even begin to understand, but I'll throw it at you. Any recommendation for how to handle funnel visualization or conversion tracking in general when each step of a form doesn't have its own unique page URL? Yes. So um, <laughs> the nice thing about that is if you have a developer, you can just ask them to do that. <laughs> um, but Google, Google has uh, the option for event tracking. So instead of, you know, you mentioned when somebody fills out a form and they redirect to a confirmation page that has a unique URL, if there is no redirect, um, you can actually use some JavaScript that uh, it looks at the on click of the button to go to the next step and it kind of counts that as a virtual page view for you uh, that does take a little more technical implementation uh, but it can absolutely be done <laughs> all right I, I checked in while we were talking tons of questions have come in the, the gist of a lot of them is wow this is really exciting i can't do it or we have you know so we outsource our website and they're great but they don't specialize in nonprofits. Um, how do I set up a Google Analytics account? Where, where is a good ebook for this? So you're going to send an ebook. There are resources online for the basics of how to create a Google Analytics account. But where do people go if they actually want to hire somebody? Like, where do they go to get that help? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, we, you know, we do that. Obviously, you can contact Jernity. <laughs> um, but really anybody anybody that does web de web development should be able to install um google analytics they should be able to get conversion tracking up they should be able to get e-commerce tracking up uh i i do mention that because you know at, at journey we are very mindful of using people's resources we care as much as you do about about making sure your resources are going to your cause Sometimes if you're outsourcing your website and you have to transition, there's a, a large cost associated with that because you have to get your database, you have to get, you know, all of that. And so I would, I would definitely look with the person that is use, doing your website first. If they can't do it, uh, you know, definitely send a message to Journity. We'd be happy to. Creating a Google Analytics account is uh, super, super easy. If you already have a Google account, uh, just go to analytics.google.com and click get started and you have an account set up basically. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, I did switch my slide. There is a direct link to the guide that we are sending out. So if you uh, if you want this and uh, don't want to wait for the email to come out, you can go right over there and download the guide right now. Uh, and I just encourage everybody that said I can't do it to uh, look at that guide and go through step by step. You really can. It, it really is a lot easier than you think. It it sounds intimidating, but it's you can do it. <laughs> there are so many questions. I, I think maybe in six months or or eight months we should come back and do like another basic 101 kind mm -hmm. and and get started. That would probably be really useful. We're running out of time. Um, we've got one minute left. I'm going to ask you one question because there's just so many questions. I'll send those to you too after the webinar is over. Um, 
what if your ultimate goal is not fundraising? What if it's just to create awareness? How could Google Analytics, if you don't need e-commerce, how could Google Analytics and conversion tracking be useful to a nonprofit that is lucky enough to not have to raise any money? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, usually there's still a, something that you're raising awareness for, right? Um, so, and there's some way that you're measuring that. Did they watch your video? Uh, did they, you know, listen to your podcast? Did they download your guide? Did they sign your petition? Uh, you know, anything like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Did they did they make a call? You know, there's lots of uh, things coming around with the election. You know, call your your local representative. Uh, you can really trigger anything as a conversion. Okay. So, so when it comes to you know, if you just want awareness, then, uh, you know, put Google Analytics on your site and just see how many people are coming to your website. And then uh, you can tell, you know, if you pay for a Facebook ad and you get 100 people and you say pay the same price for, uh, you know, an, an email through nonprofit tech for good, and you get 10 times that many people, you'll know that you're, you know, you'll know what money you're spending is getting the most awareness if that's your absolute goal if you're not getting you know you're not looking for awareness to anything specifically uh i i would recommend doing not just awareness but some kind of engagement right yeah uh, and that's really important too because i'm thinking about boards or i'm thinking about funders you know um foundations okay so we want to know you don't have to fundraise or we gave you you know this large grant we want to know how many people watch that video how many people signed the petition how many people called their senator or even how many people followed up and said they went and voted in an election or attended you know an event that was um about you know creating awareness or a campaign then you can come back with all that data and say you know we affected three million people and we created social change I find it so fascinating because when I first got online, none of this existed, right? Where, where you couldn't, and Journey, I just have to say, when you get in there, and I'm not doing a sales pitch, even he knows what before we got on this webinar, it's like, I just need to sit down and find the time to figure it out because I know this product is amazing. It's nothing I ever could have imagined 20 years ago when I first got online. The way you can send people who visit your website, that doesn't necessarily mean you get their email address or their name or all that sort of stuff. Just analyzing the online masses and how they, in a mathematical way, behave online is just fascinating. And Google Analytics gives a glimpse to that and Journey gives a glimpse to that as well. So. Josh, I commend you on everything you have in your head. Um, quite impressive. And everyone, as I said, he will get the recording together for you, the Google Analytics, maybe a few notes as well. And I know he's traveling tomorrow, but they'll get that to you tomorrow. And Josh, thank you so much. Any last words? Thank you. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to uh, sending out this information and seeing whatever additional questions come out, see if I can answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day, everybody.